a surge in scrubs, Almighty God, family praise, and a red cooler flies first class on a private jet bound for Rochester, Minnesota. It arrives carrying a living piece of a person who long ago signed a card or checked a box that made this flight possible. Maybe it was a car accident that ended the donor's life or a long coma on a family finally letting go. But what that person could not have imagined when signing that card are all the other families waiting, hoping for a precious red cooler to arrive. Ooh, the Bath and Body Works. There's Penny, who needs a lung to keep teaching her grandkids how to ride horses. And Joey, who needs a kidney and liver if he's ever going to make it to film school. And Charles, who's been on the heart list for almost two years. There's little Coulter, in constant possession of both Star Wars paraphernalia. This is my action figure Han Solo. And his IV pump. I have it because it needs medicine so that my heart will fail. And there is Jessica, the sweetest pie 30-year-old from Duluth. She loves her job, desperately wants to start a family, but knows both will have to wait while she waits for a heart and a liver and a return to the simplest of pleasures. I can't burn candles in here, and I like to burn candles. They smell nice, and they look nice. <laughs> oh, taking baths. I can't take a bath here. Oh, I just want to take a big jacuzzi tub bath <laughs> when I get out of here. Well, maybe I could smuggle in a candle and a wash tub <laughs> and distract the nurses for like an hour. <laughs> <laughs> Just let you. <laughs> That'd be fantastic. All right, I'll, I'll get to work on that. But Jess and the others will have to wait some more because this red cooler is for Gordon Carls. I'm going down to surgery in about uh, five minutes. A 60 year old professor from the University of Nebraska. A couple hours before, he got the call over 100,000 Americans are waiting for tonight. There's a liver said the voice on the phone, and soon Gordon and his wife Erla were hustling into the most important doctor's appointment of their lives. The transplant takes six hours, that vital organ that's been failing for over 15 years replaced with the liver of an older but healthier person. Meanwhile, Erla is out in the waiting room thinking about their 36 years together, the three kids, seven grandkids, and that other mystery family mourning somewhere in America tonight. We benefited from somebody that made a, a really generous decision. You know, how do you thank someone for such a big gift? Gordon's family is able to visit soon after surgery, and within a day, Gordon is even up, Transplant sitting in a chair. And I feel really lucky that it worked out. And if fate smiles, there's a chance he could meet the family of the donor one of these days. And for the head of Mayo's transplant unit, those are the moments that close this circle of loss and life. With transplant, we can't undo that tragic episode, but what we can do is we can infuse some good into an otherwise tragic episode. And where I see it most dramatically, and you know, I've been doing this my whole career and still brings tears to my eyes, is when the donor family and the recipient families get together. Mayo doctors are so skilled that the second an organ becomes available, the patient's chances of survival jumps dramatically. While most Americans support the notion of organ donation, only about 40% actually take the steps to become a donor. The demand is so high, the supply is so low, that an average of 18 people a day die waiting. These are the numbers that inspired the executives at Facebook. You know, this is not a medical crisis. This is a social crisis. We have the technology, we have the ability to save and improve these patients' lives today if enough people uh, will be part of the solution. Starting today, organ donor is a profile option in the Facebook timeline. It drives you to the proper registry and then helps motivate others to do the same with old-fashioned peer pressure. Over half of Americans are on Facebook now and if even half of those folks sign on, it could radically reduce wait times. I had heard of transplants, but I'd never, never thought anything of, like my, one of my kids would need one. I'd never paid any attention to it. Jeff and Patty Minert became vividly aware of the organ donor list the moment doctors told them that their new little boy was born without the left side of his heart. 
And then that was the bath the nurse gave him before he went down for his transplant. Coulter had his first heart transplant at six weeks old. And while he is smaller than the other kids in Mrs. Fitzner's second grade class, he has all the pent up energy of your average nine year old. This one has been in for a little over two months. But in recent years, it became obvious that the donor heart might not last till age 10. Anti-rejection drugs are taking a toll, and this time, he also needs a kidney. He's getting eight different medications right now. So the Minerts, and already veterans of the incredible stress that comes with transplant and recovery, took a deep breath and got ready to do it all over again. He had asked me, where is this heart going to come from in my kidney? You know, how do they... They get it, and, and I explained to him when another child loses their life that that's where they're going to get the heart and the kidney from, and I think he understood it to a point. After nine months on the top of the waiting list, Coulter's red cooler is set to arrive. 